police. And so to the Rally of Otago, the opening round of the six-round national championship. Richard Mason, the defending champion, he had a new car for Rally Otago held in wintry conditions. <laughs> Round one of the Vantage Aluminium Joinery New Zealand Rally Championship and it's an early autumn return to Dunedin for the Otago Daily Times Rally Otago. Once again, the battle lines are drawn in the production cars between Subaru and Mitsubishi. Ford make a return to the championship, but with the Fiesta Sporting Trophy class. And the Kiwi 2 hybrid cars are back with their high-revving, highly modified engines. In 2006, Richard Mason secured his second New Zealand Rally Championship title, with one round to go at his home rally, Wairarapa. Congratulations, Richard. You retained the New Zealand title. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome, awesome. So to 2007 and a fresh look and a new car for our champion. It's certainly nice to have a new car, the first new car I've ever owned, and it's not even a road car, so isn't that a worry? In terms of also quite a bright yellow as well. Yeah, we were a little bit sick of, of being part of the pack. Everybody's had blue Subarus lately, so um, we thought to ourselves this year that we wouldn't mind having a new colour, and yellow certainly stands out, and, and uh, hopefully it can get B&T really noticed. So, uh, yeah, that's what we went for. And joining the championship in a former Subaru Australia car built by Possum Bourne Motorsport, one of Scotland's finest rally exports. Alistair, welcome to New Zealand. You're lifting the profile of our championship. What made you come here? Uh, I just through talking with Proflex in the UK, uh, get introduced to Grenville out here, Proflex New Zealand, and along with Robbie Lester, they've worked together and made it possible for me to get out here. Uh, I still enjoy driving, and it's good to be back in New Zealand. Also back in Subarus, Dunedin driver Emma Gilmore with partner Glenn McNeil co-driving. Sam Murray and Robert Ryan are back with the Fram support of WRX and joining them for four of the six rounds, USA Rally star Ken Block. Brett Martin is back to do one better than his second, once again leading the Mitsubishi Challengers. Brett, uh, good to see you back. Last year, of course, you were saying you mightn't be able to make it this year, but you're here. Yeah, we come back. Um, for starters, we're just going to start with Dunedin and then we'll see how that goes. And if we can come away with a good result, we'll go to Pomeray and just play it, play it by ear. We'll just probably turn up and do event by event. Different co-driver this year? Yeah, different co-driver. Um, Crunch was, we had, had a three-year plan and that sort of thing, and we couldn't guarantee um, Crunch a full season this year, so it's changed. Dean Sumner teams up with Martin this year, again with backing from ITM. Yeah, we've got a brand new car for the championship this year. Um, we finished it last week and uh, pre- uh, tested, it, tested it briefly and um, felt, felt real good, felt better than the last car, a lot easier to drive, uh, a lot more forgiving, but uh, I guess the proof will be in the pudding tomorrow. With no Subaru to drive in 07, Chris West has taken up the offer from Andrew Sims to drive his Evo 6.5. And with both rookie and junior titles on the mantelpiece, Hayden Patton's excited about going one step better. Top five is the goal here this weekend. And you know, if we can work our way to the top three and possibly even event, vict- uh, event victories by the end of the year, uh, we'll be pretty happy. The Scenic Circle Hotel hosted the start on a cold but clear Saturday morning. And once again, it's time for Emma Gilmore to take us on a Vantage stage preview. Today's stages start with three stages close to Dunedin City. They're great county road stages, some big crests, very fast, should be a lot of fun. After service, we head into Berwick Forest with the longest stage of the event at 46 kilometres. We then come back down the Waipori Gorge, which again has been used for many years. An absolute awesome stage with big drops on one side into the river. Last two gravel stages are out near Lawrence. Good fast county road stages, a bit more gravel on these, so it should be a bit more of a challenge. We then head back into Dunedin City, where we have a blast around the local city block. Always lots of spectators come out to watch this, so it should be a lot of fun. But before the fun, there'll surely be some hard work ahead. And joining me now, rally commentator Roger Davis. And Roger, will Richard Mason be handicapped by having a new car? 
Well, in normal circumstances, yes, it would be a handicap starting off with a new car. You've got to go through the new settings of the car, try and get used to the car. The car will probably react differently to the old car. But Richard's actually been driving a very similar car in the China Rally, or China Rally Series last year. And admittedly, the car was left-hand drive, so he's probably got some idea how to set this car up. But he probably will struggle with this car initially in the first few stages here at Dunedin. Mason's BNT Subaru certainly looked great in the morning light. He sets a time to beat of 8 minutes 38.9, 10 seconds faster than last year. Next on the road, Alistair McRae. Roger, certainly a lot of experience in this car. Yes, you're right. There is a lot of experience in this car, but it's a new ball game for Alistair McRae here. Brand new car, brand new team, and probably more importantly, the pace notes. He's not used to this type of pace noting, so he could struggle in the early stages of this event. McRae's 8 minutes 46.6, that's nearly 8 seconds off the pace over 13 k's. Sam Murray has been busy over the summer running a car in the New Zealand Production Racing Series. So how will he adapt back to driving on gravel? Well, funny you mention that, Darcy, because Sam struggled all summer trying to adapt to tarmac racing, and now very quickly he's got to go back to what he knows, his rally driving, and he will probably struggle for a wee while. So he's got to throw all the tarmac experience he's had over summer out and get back into gravel driving. One thing he will have, though, is race mileage. Murray, in fact, was just 0.1 of a second behind McRae, so already a bit of catching up to do. Emma Gilmore briefly led Rally Otago in 2006 and has put in the miles doing international rallies in Europe. And it's paying off here, just three seconds down on Mason. But Brett Martin is on fire. Second fastest and leading the Mitsubishi Challenge, just 2.9 seconds behind Mason and 0.4 of a second ahead of Gilmore. A more conservative run for teammate Dean Sumner puts him 10th fastest. And Roger, Hayden Padden here, a young man with plenty of promise. Yes, you got that right, Darcy, plenty of promise here. He's only 20 years old now. Just look at the concentration he's got when he's driving his car and how smooth he is with that steering wheel. A lot of experience in the passenger seat with John Kennard as a co-driver. He's been doing that for many years. Just see how smooth he is. He's so good inside this car. The double caution, slippy five right, keep right to narrow forward. Delivering on that promise too. Fourth fastest, 6.8 seconds down on Mason, so definitely in touch. Ken Block made headlines by jumping his rally car in spectacular fashion earlier this year, but the man behind DC Shoes has a lot to learn in New Zealand. Well, one thing he will be familiar with is the jumps. There's quite a few jumps in this uh, rally of Otago, so he's used to going over jumps. But he did the rally in Mexico this year, WRC round. He drove a production car. His main reason for coming down here is to get used to driving a production car because he wants to carry on doing the WRC rounds. It's great to have a person like this here, Ken Block. He's a great character. He'd be good fun throughout the season for all the competitors. Ninth fastest, so as expected, just easing himself into the championship. Dylan Turner, fifth fastest here, despite running tenth on the road. But a terrible start for Aussie visitor David Hills, who'd come to assess a possible championship raid in 2008. So after stage one, it's Richard Mason showing that his new car is already up to speed, but being pushed hard by Martin and Gilmore. Stages two and three run through the hills along the South Otago coast and are well known to Otago Rally competitors. The weather has changed for the worst, with a strong coastal breeze whipping across the hilltops. On board the BNT Subaru, and Mason doesn't look like he's under pressure, Roger. No, he certainly doesn't, but he always looks like this. He's so calm inside that car and so smooth. We get really accustomed to watching this. Now, let's look at him come to this corner here. And it actually looks a little bit slow, but I can assure you it's not. It's just his smooth style. Now, have a look at these crests of the Rally Otago. Don't cut. Repeat caution. All those miners don't cut. Thank you. 
Not too much caution because Mason is once again fastest over both it's stages and begins to extend his lead. Brett Martin kept ahead of Gilmore on stage two, but by stage three he had lost his grip and slipped back to third. Gilmore really showing grit here, and by the end of three, she was just 10 seconds behind Mason. Well, I said earlier about Richard Mason being slow through here, but look how aggressive Emma Gilmore is. She's a lot more aggressive through here. We've seen this stage from the outside. Now let's ride along in the Fram Subaru with Sam Murray to the same corner. Eight left on the tarmac. 100, three left at junction. And Murray, the big improver here, moving up to fourth place on stage two, but slipping back to fifth by the end of special stage three. I'm 80. And this is the driver putting the pressure on Murray. 20-year-old Hayden Patton showing that he'll be a big threat to the establishment in 2007. To six left, 150. Certainly a lot of commitment there from Hayden Patton as he comes into this turn. Hard braking into the turn, and he gets a little bit wide coming off the turn. Alistair McRae still held six, but his Subaru not matching the pace of Mason and Gilmore. He was now 22 seconds down on the leaders. Well, Darcy, this car hasn't really done a lot of mileage, but it is the earlier version of the Subaru, not like the Richard Mason, the new car. Dylan Turner had the services of Damon McLaughlin for this rally. McLaughlin was a long-time co-driver for Todd Borden in the New Zealand Rally Championship and was sitting in for Sandy Bansell, who had business commitments. Turner was hoping that he can benefit from Damon's experience. They dropped back to seventh, though, just four seconds behind McRae. 80. Through dip. Five left over quest. Jump 100. Five right plus Titan. Hawks Bay driver Stuart Taylor had settled into eighth in his Mitsubishi. And Chris West here trying very hard to stay in touch with the more modern machinery up front in ninth. Ken Block was coming to terms to driving on the New Zealand pace notes. With only one pass over the roads in Reki, there isn't much time to get used to a new style of pace note. And that one pass and wreck is not what the overseas drivers are familiar with. And in a lot of cases, if we could have two passes, we might actually get a lot more competitors over here to compete in the National Rally Championship. Because traditionally, that's what they do in the WRC and also a lot of the overseas championships as well. Particularly on roads like this, you see all these crests. So after three stages, it's Mason out in front by nine seconds, but a spirited drive by Gilmore to hold second over Martin. Yeah, the new car is taking a little bit to get used to, but it's, um, it's certainly a comfortable uh, car to drive and, and we're enjoying it. So. Tire wear, we noticed not a lot of tire wear this morning. No, I didn't think there would be. The road conditions are quite, um, they're quite moist and, and they're quite cold, so tyres aren't getting a lot of heat in them. Running second on the first rally of the season has been a confidence boost for Dunedin driver Emma Gilmore. Yeah, we had a good start this morning. Car feels great and it's just a matter of fine-tuning everything really. But no, very happy with our start and, and looking forward to improving it this afternoon. Richard Mason's done what he did last year. I guess he's nine seconds up the road. Yeah, yeah, but it's not too far away. Like, it's a lot closer than we've been in the past. So, you know, it's, it's catchable or it's a spin or it's a puncture, you know. There's still a lot, lot to happen. It's probably only a third of the day gone. So there's still a lot that can eventuate. Teaming up with a new co-driver can be difficult, but Brett Martin and Grant Mara seem to have made a good connection. Yeah, the first two stages went pretty well for us. Um, haven't, didn't know really what to expect. Haven't been with Grant before, so but on the last one we sort of overshot an in section, lost a bit of time. But team manager Jeff Argyle has big problems with the second car of Dean Sumner. Yeah, we've uh, blew our turbo halfway through stage two and... Um, yeah, we're not going to get it changed in time to uh, be able to re-enter because we've got a half an hour um, time penalty before you can get excluded, so we, we can't get it changed in time. So that's us for the today, and we'll uh, fix it tonight and restart tomorrow. 
Alistair McRae has no experience with the Otago stages, which maybe explains his lack of pace. Yeah, no, I don't think we've not dropped so much. That's the main thing. You can't afford to drop a lot. Uh, we'll see how the next one goes. I'm not sure whether the snow's still going to be there. So it'll be important to get the right tyre choice in here and then uh, just keep pushing on for the rest of the day. Talking about tyres, we noticed not a lot of wear on the tyres coming out. Yeah, the roads, the roads there were, were pretty easy on the tyres. They're still quite damp. Uh, the next stage is higher and there was snow on the stage yesterday in the recce, so it's going to be a bit more difficult, I think. Coming up after the break, can anyone catch Richard Mason as the rally moves into the Otago forests? Welcome back to Otago, where the Fiesta Sporting Trophy is debuting in the Vantage Aluminium New Zealand Rally Championship. Mark Tapper set the early pace and leads after three stages. Kane Barry had moved to the class after two seasons in Kiwi 2 and immediately found the car quite different to drive, especially the modest horsepower. He was third in the class after the morning stages behind Southland's Chris Lang. Lang made a few appearances in a Kiwi 2 Mitsubishi Mirage, but this is his first serious attempt at a New Zealand title. Also moving to Fiesta for 07, New Zealand Truth owner Dermot Malley, showing his competitors that you don't need an expensive Auckland billboard to promote your newspaper. Dave Strong led the Kiwi 2 class, while 06 Classic champion Bert Murray was back in his main freight RX-7. Stage four was cancelled, so the rally lost 44k of forest roads. But after a short blast through stage five, Mason still had a 10-second lead over Gilmore, Martin, Murray, Turner, McRae, Padden and Taylor rounding out the top eight. Now the rally moved south to Lawrence, two public stage roads not used by the rally for several years, but holding fond memories for those spectators and drivers who've been around for quite a while. Richard Mason first out on the roads. A bit of gravel there, Roger. Is that going to prove to be problematic? No, not really, because the roads are quite soft base. So, no, I can't see it being a problem at all. No problem for Mason. Fastest again, showing absolutely no issues with this new car. Emma Gilmore kept second place, but she lost touch with Mason on these two stages, allowing him to edge out to a 27-second lead by the end of Special Stage 7. Look at Emma Gilmore around there, pulled the handbrake, got the car sideways, got out of the corner very quickly. Brett Martin was putting up a fight for second. He clawed back a second on stage six to be just six seconds behind. seven mechanical damage to the gearbox forced his early retirement. That left the door open for Alistair McRae, who picked up the pace on these stages to finish stage seven in third. Dylan Turner has been hunting a top five finish to finally secure a coveted New Zealand B seeding, which will see him given priority in start order on New Zealand rallies. But with his drive into fourth place, he looked to be heading that way. There are two interesting factors here to Dylan Turner's very good drive today. Like you said, in a great battle with Sam Murray. Now the first is a co-driver. A lot of experience having Damon alongside. And the other thing is, they've got the centre diff working in his car. So if you remember last year, he was very sideways with the car. Now he can drive the car straight. And straight means fast. And there were just over two seconds separating him and Sam Murray going to the final spectator stage. had problems, however, a mystery engine ailment robbing the car of power. And with long uphill stretches on this stage, that was frustrating the Palmerston North driver. Seven left, eight left, 50, five right minus 50. 
7 right minus, tightens to a 5. Plus 80. Hayden Padden, another to suffer on the closing stages. After running as high as fourth, the young Mitsubishi driver now finds himself defending sixth position, just over a second in front of the older Evo 6.5 of Chris West. 4 8 plus line, 80. Chris, 30, turn long, 2, 3 right, don't. 30, 6 left minus, 50. 6 left over crest, open 7, 100. After a slow start, West was managing to keep the older car in the top 10. Stuart Taylor was now in eighth and found himself in a battle with Subaru driver Ken Block, just 10 seconds behind. had picked up the pace on these more predictable public road stages but had lost too much time early on to challenge the top five. Well the interesting thing here Darcy is both Ken Block and Alistair McRae picked up the pace on these last two stages and maybe the pace notes obviously with only one pass over and recce a little bit better visibility on these stages they can see where they're going. rookie contender Callum McInnes looks like he'll be the fastest Kiwi in that title race. Unfortunately Alistair McRae and Ken Block are also classed as rookies. Go figure. In 11th, Nathan Thomas has moved up to the production cars after debuting in the champs in a Kiwi 2 Suzuki Ignis. And Patrick Malley rounds out the top 12 in his Evo 8. With just a publicity stage around the Dunedin Wharfs to go, Richard Mason looks to have started his season in the best possible way. Yeah, it's certainly nice to have a good lead. Um, the last couple of stages were just fantastic, and, and um, just what rallying is all about fast, flowing, cresty, everything. So, uh, and enough room to move the car around, so it was really enjoyable. Sam, judging by the stage time, is a bit of a problem the last two stages. Yeah, we sort of um, developed a little loss of power in those last two, and it's been the end of a frustrating day, really. You know, we started off this morning reasonably OK, obviously not as well as we wanted, but not as, certainly not as bad as where we are now, so, yeah, pretty disappointing. And disappointment, too, for Team Green. Hayden Padden reflects on what might have been. Yeah, the afternoon has not been an afternoon I want to remember. Uh, there's just been heaps of, or a few wee niggly problems and uh, slowed us down a bit. But uh, we'll get today over and done with and then we'll come out in all four cylinders tomorrow and start off where we left off this morning, I guess. So with just one stage left on leg one, and we'll ride this one with Hayden Patton around the streets of Dunedin. So confirming the result at the end of leg one of round one of the Vantage Aluminium Joinery Rally Championship. And it's Richard Mason who'll take the honours and go some way toward winning the three bonus points on offer to the winner of the rally. But certainly for Emma Gilmore, a lot to be positive about. Her pace showing that in 2007, she'll be a serious threat in the championship. Emma, great result, second on your home rally. Yeah, we had a great day, really enjoyed myself. The car was awesome and it was just a matter of building up confidence again in it. The roads are fantastic, the team did a great job, tyres were cool. Yeah, we had a great day. 
you've been second before, but this time you, you actually deserve second battle to right from the start. Yeah, it's, it's a totally different feeling when you know that you've earned it. And, um, you know, it was a shame that Brett dropped out late in the day because he was, he was doing a really good job as well. But, um, no, we're happy with our second place. And, and it's, you know, once we work on some of the small things I've got to got to improve, then I think that we'll, we'll be able to have a real battle with Richard. Yeah, and very happy. Obviously, the first time here, new stages, new co-driver, new car. Uh, happy to be third. Certainly look from the times that it took you a while to sort of get into it. Yeah, it's just getting the confidence on a, a new note system. Obviously, been used to making my own pace notes for well, 15 years now. So just to you know start on somebody else's notes and obviously with Steve being there and not having worked together, so just you know you had to play yourself in a bit gently. We didn't want to damage Robbie's car. And fourth place for Turner, his best result in two years of championship rallying. Nice. Quick left, minus 80, long four right, opens. It's amazing what a centre diff does, you know. It's, uh, we worked out early or late last season that it wasn't working, and when we pulled it apart, it burnt out. So, um, so, yeah, they're good cars, but not without a centre diff, they're not. So while the rest of the field burn their rubber around the streets, let's check out a new feature in the coverage with our Fujitsu fact file. Pace notes, which are called by the co-driver, are the way of the driver visualising what's coming ahead. And six left, tightens to five minus over crest, 200. The short numbers in the pace notes describe the angle of the corner and the speed at which the bend should be attacked. The long numbers refer to the distance between the corners. The art of calling pace notes, or the most difficult bit for the co-driver, is to actually know when to call the information out. Because too much information, and it's easy for the driver to forget. Too little information, and you could end up off the road. Day two, leg two of the Otago Daily Times rally. And once again, it's time to check out the Vantage Stage preview with Emma Gilmore. Leg two, and it's an all new rally. Seven more stages today, and we start off with the famous Curry Bush stage. It's the closest stage we get in New Zealand to something in Finland with big jumps, big crests, and it's really fast. It's awesome. The following stage is back into the forest. This should be pretty challenging as it's uh, been a bit of rain and it should be a bit of slippery in there. Stage 11 will be a real challenge, starting off in forestry roads, we then open out onto some fast county roads. Big crests again, and uh, I think the brakes will get a real workout by the end of this. Then into another forestry <coughs> stage before we head back to service. Stage 10 is Tyree Beach, nice which we haven't done today, but after this new stage, we head back out into Akatori, which we did earlier in the day. This will definitely be where the rally is won or lost, as if it's close, with the slippery conditions, it'll definitely be a real challenge. The last stage, and not too many places should be changing here, because it's just a short run around the local trotting track. It'll be a great chance to show off in front of my local crowd. Richard Mason sets the pace on the first stage with a 7 minute 59 second run. But today it's Dean Sumner who lays down the challenge. He equals Mason on the first stage to share the lead. But not to be outdone, Emma Gilmore gets a great start. <laughs> After trailing Mason and Sumner through stage nine, she takes the lead on stage 10. Akatore beating Mason by 15 seconds over 25k. Mr. McRae also made his move on 10, moving into second behind Gilmore, although still 14 seconds down on the Dunedin driver. And it's a top five spot again for Patton, just 0.6 of a second behind Sumner. Chris West in sixth led the next group, who were bunched up, but still over 30 seconds down on the leaders. Sam Murray was virtually tied with West, but it wasn't the performance he'd hoped for. On last season's form, Murray should be at least challenging the top three. And Six Darcy, just look at the surface Six change feet. here. Uh, quite a narrow road they're on now. With Four the wet conditions, it'll be pretty right slippery right. underneath, it'll be muddy. And the other thing is they'll be using the stage again in about three stages from now, so it's even going to be more treacherous. Six Looks like Sam Murray... Driving with a great deal of caution through here. 
Stuart Taylor in eighth was showing similar form to day one. American driver Ken Block had ended day one frustrated with his performance on unfamiliar roads with unfamiliar notes. But that is the experience which he needs if he's to mount a PWRC challenge. Today he was driving more aggressively, maybe just a little too aggressively. Three right long over Fred. Repeat. Big right flat. Open 100. Caution. Three right long over Fred. 100 again. Right there. Fucking it. To 100. And that was a 100, man. What? Dylan Turner not quite on his leg one pace in ninth position. While rookie Callum McInnes was in 10th. So for the second consecutive year, Emma Gilmore leads a New Zealand Championship rally. Alistair McRae has finally got the better of Richard Mason, while Mason may be left wondering how he lost so much time on one stage. Emma certainly pulled a blinder in the second stage. You've got a 14 second lead on the rally now. Yeah, it was um, a bit surprising when we got to the end. We thought we'd done a good job, but it's hard when it's really, really slippery because you don't know how hard everyone else is pushing. And so, um, yeah, we kept our fingers crossed and, yeah, just kept pushing on. And, yeah, it was great to have that lead when we came out the other side. Yeah, it's a bit slippery in the second stage today and we're still learning the car. So um, we just sort of cruised through there and, and um, learning what it's like in the slippery conditions as well. Cruised through there, Emma Gilmore, didn't she? She's got a 14-second lead on you now. That's OK. We can uh, work on that during the day. It seems the roads on day two are more familiar to ex-WRC driver Alistair McRae. Yeah, I think it was just it was more what I'm used to. It's uh, in the forest, and it was quite slippy, so we pushed quite hard over the slippy stuff, and Richard said he backed off a bit, so we lost a bit of time. Emma's gone seven seconds quicker than you have. I know. I wasn't going to mention that one. <laughs> but disaster for Brett Martin once again, forced out of the rally, this time with computer problems. Just about five k's into the stage, it just stopped, and... Um, wasn't really sure, we just, the rev, just had no revs and so we played around with the computer wires and it just sort of sparked into life again and we were in, we've come to the end of this, got to the end of the stage and found that a few of the wires have broken so we try and see where they go and hopefully get them fixed. Uh, Ken, a lot of wires you're holding up, what's happened this morning? Uh, I had a slide off and uh, ended up destroying the wheel which in turn destroyed the wiring harness so we ended up only about... Mm, Mile and a, a K and a half here from from service. I, if we'd made it that K and a half, we would have been fine. But you know, these things happen. Car died right on the side of the road. Stages 11 and 12 now, and a longer stage for the drivers to get into. Richard Mason had to make up 15 seconds to regain the lead and he immediately set about that with a determined drive through 25k stage 11. By the end of stage 12, he had clawed back 7 seconds on Gilmore. But was it enough as the stage miles ran out? Well, just look inside the car here, Darcy. Richard's really uh, picked up the pace. You can tell quite a bit of aggression going in there. Uh, he's really trying to chase Emma Gilmore down because he's quite a bit behind her. He's got a lot of time to make up. So, Darcy, what's Emma doing? Well, Emma's kept up the pace, Roger. She stays in the lead by seven and a half seconds. when the co-driver's calling the notes. The driver actually does talk in the car as well. Have a listen here. 300. Crest, 200. Yeah. Six right. What he said there basically is I'm ready for the next instruction. In third place, Patton had a 10-second lead over Dean Sumner. Sumner's struggling to match his early speed over the later stages. And fifth was a further 10 seconds down on Sumner, but now over a minute away from the leaders. His engine problems exacerbated by the long, fast stretches of stages so typical of this event. Seven right over, minus over. He's got the car seriously off the ground there, Darcy. Five left minus, over small crest, tightened to a long four minus and narrow. 
Yeah, but unfortunately, Roger, that was the first spin of several cars to lose time on that corner. For Dylan Turner in seventh, though, it was his approach to this jump which would win praise from his co-driver that bend his front suspension. Fast crest, 200. Caution, 7 right minus over crest, 60. And crest 60, caution 5 left minus over small crest, tightens the long 4 off camber and exit. Tightens the long 4, 200, that was an amazing jump mate. 6 right plus over crest, 200. Chris West was holding on to 6, just 1 second ahead of Sumner. But Alistair McRae's challenge ended when he slowed with centre diff problems on stage 12. That left him in eighth, just ahead of fellow championship rookie Callum McInnes in ninth position. And Nathan Thomas finds himself in tenth. Patrick Malley took time out to try the wall of death manoeuvre on his way to 11th position. So after special stage 12, Emma Gilmore defiantly leads the day on her home event. A little bit different at the moment so to you the fact that you're just right in there battling with them this time yeah it's great it's great to be up there and, and to be putting pressure on them but um you know we're still not quite there yet because we're, we're not really consistent enough but yeah i think we'll improve and, and it'll get better Alice, so the day's not looking really good uh, drop down another minute at the last stage yeah no it started off well the first two stages were good uh, but then we had a bit of a problem with the car in the road section not quite sure what it was and then uh, on the second stage in that loop, the engine just started cutting out, so we just had to cruise through, so we've dropped a fair bit of time and some road penalties. Hayden, you've been in this position before. You're actually in a podium place at this stage, third. Yeah, it's great. Obviously, uh, it's a pity that Alice had some problems in there, so we've more or less gained it rather than earned it, but other, it's going good. We're having a nice, clean run, uh, but it's not over yet. There's uh, obviously a short stage, but then the, the 25k stage uh, will be the, the sting in the tail, so hopefully we can have a, a good, clean run through there like we did this morning. So two stages to go before the final super stage on day two, including a repeat run through the now slippery Akatori stage. Stage 13, Tyree Beach, was only nine kilometres long, but Richard Mason had the bit between his teeth and clawed back another four and a half seconds over Gilmore. Stage, a timing error left Gilmore thinking she had lost the lead to Mason and trailing by seven seconds when in fact she had a three second lead. Crest to long six right, 30 long four left minus. Hayden Padden was a distant 43 seconds behind in third but had Dean Sumner just 13 seconds back in fourth. 30, four left opens. Five right plus Titans, four plus. To finish, 30, seven left plus over Chris. The five right Titans, four plus and opens. Sam Murray was equal third fastest through the stage to now be fifth, nine seconds behind Sumner. Let's wrap up the finishes in the classes in the Rally of Otago. Reg Cook held off a challenge from Dave Strong to claim second in Kiwi 2. While 2006 champion Aaron Cook held on for the class win in his Honda. Kane Barry finished second in the Fiesta Trophy and 16th overall. While Mark 
Tapper finished 13th outright, the first two-wheel drive and maximum points in the Fiesta Trophy. And sliding their way to glory in the New Zealand Classic Championship, Rob Wiley, who finished second in the class and 20th overall. But he's got some catching up to do to match the pace of classic leader Bert Murray, 14th outright just behind Tapper's Fiesta. Nathan Thomas finished League 2 in 10th on his production car debut. Tauranga's McInnes coming home in 9th in the Milk Bar Subaru. After teething problems on his debut event, Alistair McRae did finish in eighth. Ironically, despite his experience, he's the first rookie. Dylan Turner finished the day in seventh to confirm his B seeding, but late in the stage, he escaped with a scare. Go out from crest into a five left. Oh, sorry, mate. This is your 250, this is your crest into a five left, 150. Three right, Titans. Don't cut, don't go wide on exit. 120. Oh. We can beauty. 120. Chris West was sixth on leg two and just eight seconds away from the fifth place car of Sam Murray. Although questions remain as to whether this may be his only appearance in the 07 season. Sam Murray really had a weekend to forget, with a feeling that he and the team were not on top of the performance. However, fifth place was better than he may have hoped for on day two. On debut, the ITM Mitsubishi of Dean Sumner looks to have good pace. In fourth, he could be a man to watch over the season. As will this team, Team Green, Hayden Padden, third place on leg two, certainly a great improvement over day one and shows that his aim of top three finishes this year is more than realistic. And so to the battle for leg two honours. With two stages to go, the 10 second error still remained in the timing, not to be corrected until just before the final stage was run. But Mason put the matter to rest anyway when he blitzed through Akatori 6.7 seconds faster than Gilmore to take a slim 3.7 second lead. So despite losing first place, Emma Gilmore carries on with a gritty drive in Otago. We pressed on a little bit more than, than I would have comfortably done in the, in, the, um, in the last stage there. Being slippery, I would have normally just taken it easy just for the safe side, but um, Emma was pretty close. She's been driving really well, so um, we had to make sure that we uh, kept her behind us. So just a matter of holding on for the ride with Richard Mason through the last stage to claim the win. Well, Richard Mason's just been told about the error. He's only got a three-second lead, so he's going to drive through the stage quite a bit faster. Emma Gilmore doesn't even know. She thinks she was seven seconds down. In actual fact, she was only three seconds down coming into this Forbury stage. And indeed, Emma Gilmore was faster than Richard Mason on this stage, but not fast enough. She missed out on the rally victory by a mere two and a half seconds. So nothing in it really in the end after that last stage and once again Rally Otago produces a down to the wire result. Good debut. Um, you know, new car, you always wonder if you're going to have little teething problems or whether or not you actually finished the first rally. So to win the first rally in a new car is certainly a, a very nice feeling. It's been a great step up this weekend. We've been consistently with his pace and, you know, there's still things we need to fine-tune, but, you know, it was, a, it was a great start to the season. What do you put it down to? Obviously, you've got Glenn back in the car. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a big part of it, but I, I think a lot of it, you know, he does a good job calling the notes, but it's more he helps with my confidence and that in the car, and then that's a big thing is that he, he probably helps my ego a bit, which is probably something that I've always lacked a little bit before. I've lacked in self-confidence, and, and that makes a big difference in how you drive your car. 
So overall, Richard Mason's rally lead was 29 seconds over Gilmore. So he'll take away the bonus three points on offer and leads the championship going into round two, Rally Whangarei. And there was a nice little moment from onboard Richard Mason's car. You may not have caught it a moment when co-driver Sarah Randall laughed and said, that was pretty lucky, but it's not just luck that put Mason on top of the standings after Rally Otago.